I'm just getting out the car um, and I'm going to see another um, part. No, I'm just coming out. I'm coming out one second. Um, yeah, so we're here and um, in the heart. This place is called, I believe, La Sara, but it's in the heart of the. How do I say this in English? I'm not sure the word. I'll show you, it's just easier. But all this is, um, you know, this is historically um, from. This is like generations back so from my great great grandfather passed down to my grandfather from my great great grandfather passed to my great grandfather passed to my grandfather so this is all part of our generational heritage so I'm very happy and proud to show you so let's go it's very hard to come out oh. So there's a school that's going on here. <laughs> Professor's taking a video, so I'm going to go and join. Salam alaikum. Salamu alaikum. No, Chenna Salam Alekum Salam Alekum Salam Alekum Salam Alekum Eh, <laughs> So This is a traditional um tablet made from wood which um is used uh, traditionally in Islamic um Quranic education instead of paper everybody has this in the house word for this is allu and basically it's written in black ink with um, a fountain pen this Arabic script this writing which are verses from the Quran are written with a fountain pen called al alami in Hausa and Arabic is called al alam which is basically a pen and it's the kind of traditional pen that you dip into ink and then write okay the kids are making a lot of noise Okay, so they're, they're getting a bit noisy because they're reciting Quran. But basically, this here, what I was saying is it's dipped into a pot of ink with the traditional fountain pen called al qalami in Hausa and al qalam in Arabic. And then the verse of the Quran is written until the um, children learn it off head. And then um, it gets washed off when they memorize it. And then a new verse is written. I used to have one of these when I was a kid. Um, and my mum also had hers. Um, it's just a traditional way of learning. So we call this a tablet, um, and this is in place of paper. So this is real, authentic, yeah. traditional Sahelian yeah. Islam. Gashi, not worried. Eh? We're gonna go Kai inaka kai akarate. Ah, 
Here's the Quranic teacher, and here is another girl. Alu Ambaki. Alu Ambaki. Wow. Wow. Zal. Ba. Ra. Ba. Alu Baki. Lalang. Ha Kuri. Mengai. Well. No. Bahakali. Alu Ambaki. Alu Ambaki. Zal. Alu Ambaki. Wow. Zal. Ba. Alu Baki. Okay, so I had another glitch. I thought I was recording um, and I wasn't. So I had another glitch. I thought I was recording um, and I wasn't. So um, let me just explain. Okay, guys, I had another glitch. Um, I thought I was recording and talking to the camera, but I wasn't. So anyway, the school that's taking place um, behind me there um, is our traditional ancient um, system of Islamic Quranic education here in the Sahel um, that spans from like West Africa all the way through to East Africa and Central and Southern Africa and um, you know we get criticized a lot for this system of education um, obviously because you know people think that um, the the necessary education is the Western formal system of education now obviously um, my position is I do think that if you don't have a Western um, formal Western education in this day and age, you are severely disadvantaged. Um, and I think it is necessary. I think it is necessary in you know today's society. You do need to have a Western, a formal Western education and schooling. But at the same time, I don't think it should displace the traditional Islamic system of education that we have. Um, and I just favour a dual system, dual system of Quranic and Western schooling, Western formal schooling, which is what most um, kids in the city do. But here is not the city. This is, you know, a village. It's a deep village. I believe these children do attend um, primary, formal primary education. But um, this is Christmas Day, by the way. I forgot to tell you something really important. Today is the 25th of December 2019. So um, it would be something that children engage in outside the formal Western education. Um, again, we'll get criticised because the children look um, disadvantaged and poor, but these children are not, are not street kids. They have parents, they have homes. Um, and actually, you know, they might look a little bit ragged um, and wearing haggard clothes, but they're not like disadvantaged kids. Um, and that's the only thing I can, you know, that's the only way I can explain. So um, I hope that kind of gives you a brief insight into what we've seen. It's very easy to judge and criticise something that you have a glimpse into, but bear in mind, you can't really judge or criticize unless you walk a mile in somebody's shoes and this is only a glimpse of what you see so be mindful before coming to any kind of judgments or criticism of what you see i'm going to give you a 360 of the open space which is absolutely beautiful it's so different to where you've usually seen me filming and vlogging and I'm getting, obviously, looks from locals, which is completely understandable because they're not used to seeing a female um, taking selfies with her shades and just, like, being out here. Here's the road, and here I am. So, obviously, I am a novelty. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I remember it in another girl. Uh, 110. Uh, Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. So we have cotton here. This is a cotton field. These are all cotton fields. So you pick it and there's a cotton. 
Wow. Say see bleach and ancient. Say I'm fine the shit. Say I'm fine the shit. Ah, haka aki masadama. Atatalasha, atatalasha. One nung kwalende kisi kisi ne kamai ilung. Okay. One nung shine ilung. Ah, lele. Next, ya dunidi dan rinsing. Yezu, to one nung kumala asake bunyi wa adam. Ah, iko anda. So cotton natural ni. So what don't I keep using um kaya sawa? Kaya sawa. Ama one nung kumase yezama audiga. I test the audiga. I bleach and ancient. I treat and ancient. Ah, lele. Wow. Mhm. Orang ni nak ni pun sangat hak kata kita ni nak orang kan? Abang hadir di. Abang hadir. All this is cotton field. All this here. This spans. You know what? The sun is actually really hot. I'm going to get super tanned because the sun is really hot and it's in my face. So I'm going to get so tanned today. Good <laughs> meal. Oh, it's a this is an okra plant and there's one so this is an okra plant and there's only one piece of okra at the top that's so funny <laughs> Look at our beautiful Fulani cattle. I'm not gonna go near them, not that I'm scared of them. I used to actually have one as a pet, but I just can't be bothered. I'm actually really tired now. So I'm gonna go back to the car, because I'm tired. And they are off to go around on a tour of the whole ranch. And I will say good luck to you guys. Have fun. I am off back to the car. I'm actually really tired. Um, and also quite sleepy. So I don't know if you can see where we're parked over there. Let me see if I can zoom in. You can see zoom. Yeah, we're just, there's the car. And I have to walk all this way back. So let's go. I hope there are no snakes here, literally. Because if there are, I'm not even going to scream. I'm just going to kill it. I'm going to kill the fucking snake because I'm just, I'm tired now, okay? I've had enough. Look at that bull. Look at him. Look at that bull. Wow. Beautiful creature. And that, that in front of us is the road home. I'm back by the way, I'm sitting here waiting for them to come back because I'm just exhausted. My feet really hurt. I'm going to show you my shoes and my feet really, really hurt. So, um, yeah, I'm back here. I'm just waiting for them to come back and then we'll be on our way. And look at this mud hut behind me. Beautiful, authentic uh, African hut. Oh, wow, it's a mosque. I'm going to have to take proper footage. This is a mosque. Look at this beautiful mud building. Okay, let me flip the camera around and show you properly. Mosque. It's a mud hut mosque, and there's a chicken inside. There's a chicken. Yeah. There's a chicken in the mosque, and there's the mosque with the um, with the uh, tablets, the Quranic tablets, and there's the mimba. Look at the mimba! Wow. 
Hello chicken. Hello chicken. Hello chicken. Chicken. Bismillah. Uzbillah. Oh wow! Look at the member. There's a mosque. So we have the um. This looks like oh wow. Amazing. Oh look at that beautiful handwriting. Wow. And look at the tisbih. Okay, this is a, a prayer mat and it's made from ram skin, sheep skin. This is real sheep skin and it's called buzu in Hausa. And um, traditionally it's used as a mat for praying. So when people, you know, the very organic life that people no longer have, um, the pre-wasteful life, they would use all parts of the animal. And this is obviously the, we call it buzu in Hausa, but this is from the, the sheep. So it's actual sheep skin. And this, that's the member for the imam. And we have, um, this is a bag. And inside it is a Quran. I know that much. This is a traditional. And it's all handwritten. The Quran. And the, these are the Quranic tablets for writing the surah. And then we have our um, Hausa mat, which is called Tabarra. And look at this little window. So this is authentic mud hut mosque. Absolutely beautiful. So, so makes me so proud of my heritage and to see that there are still, um, there's still parts of this, you know, ancient culture um, today and it still hasn't been, you know, completely wiped away in favour of modern living. Now, don't get me wrong. These are my shoes. I've taken off. I've abandoned because my feet are really sore and hurting. <laughs> Oh, okay, that's it. I did it. I did it. I did it. I did it. I you're racist. Why are you picking out when the Siki Parade? How can you wear those shoes for going around in the ranch, honestly? Hey, hey, hey. We have an audience behind us. <laughs> Thank God for selfies. They all have this um, tribal mark here. So Kuba feel any money here? <laughs> There's a joke between Fulani and Kanuri. They say that that we are they are our masters and we're their slaves. And Fulani say that we are. It's just a joke, okay? It's a joke, okay? But it's a tra um, intercultural joke between Kanuri and Fulani. So Kanuri say, "Oh, Fulani are our slaves and we're your masters." So all these here, they have this. Um, 
this is called fashion goshi, which is um, means a splitting of the forehead, and it goes all the way down to the nose. Um, so that's a symbol of their um, tribe, which is Kanuri. And um, this gentleman here said, I said, oh, so you're not Fulani? And he said, oh, no, 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 we're your masters, you're our slaves. So he's referring to me as, as their slaves, which is obviously, you know, an intercultural joke. So, why about you, Why about you, so why is it why is it akore za me mima why is it 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 why my aunt's like don't have a bath my aunt's so rude. She said, go, go have a bath. Go, go get your parents to give you a bath. You all need a good bath. That's what my aunt said. Go go Saudi. I like it. I have to get into this one car. Make a get you. This oxen that you see, the brown one, is worth 500 grand. It's not a joke. Cattle farming is a big business. Like, don't underestimate it. Don't ever look at somebody with cattle and think, oh, this person, this person, you know, doesn't have any money. You are so wrong. That brown ox in front of me, let me zoom in, like I said, is worth 500 grand, which in British pounds is about a thousand pounds. A thousand British pounds. I'm not at that. I'm not at that.